Here's a rotational motion problem for you. I recommend that you pause the video at the problem segment and work out the problem on your own before you get a chance to look at mine. Okay, here we go again. Problem 7-4 with a little asterisk because it's not exactly the same as the one that's in the book. It's close, but not quite. It says a potter's wheel accelerates. Okay, so we're going to draw a potter's wheel. Here's a potter's wheel, top view. Potter's wheel, pretty much a circle, isn't it? And so, is this a Harry Potter, do you think? Um, unless he needs a haircut, he might be Harry Potter. Okay, so it says that this is condition number one. And in this case, Potter's wheel is rotating. Here's the omega. Omega, in condition number one, it says is three radians per second. Condition number two, it says then later, six seconds later, in fact, so six seconds elapses, and then the potter's wheel turns again, and now, under this condition, we'll call this omega-2, and it says omega-2 is eight radians per second. Great. Okay, part A says find the acceleration of the wheel. So, hmm. One of these omegas, the other omega, time difference between them, we got to find the acceleration. Oh boy, so here we wind up with a bunch of physics principles that describe this situation. And they're similar to the linear motion equations, but now they're for rotational motion. So these say such things as theta equals theta zero plus omega zero t plus one half alpha t squared. That's one of them. Next one says omega equals omega zero plus alpha t. Third one says omega squared equals omega zero squared plus two alpha times theta minus theta zero. Where do these things come from? From the book. That's where all these equations are from. You knew that. Okay. So now we need to look at these equations and find out, uh, let's see, what's the unknown? Unknown in this is alpha. What is alpha? Uh, we know the time. This is time equals six seconds. We know omega one and omega two. Fine. We know some omegas. Uh, let's see. How about this first equation? Will this help us? Uh, we don't know theta. Theta zero. We can start the clock wherever. Let's just choose theta zero to be zero. Omega zero. We know that. Uh, T. We know that. So that's unknown, but the alpha is unknown. That doesn't help us. One equation, two unknowns, no good. What about this one? Omega, yeah, we know the omega. We know the initial, initial omega. We don't know alpha, we do know t. Ha <laughs> ha, we're in business, aren't we? So now we can solve this one. And I think, let's see, this is the a part of the problem. It says alpha equals omega minus omega zero divided by t. So then, that's easy enough. Three radians, eight radians per second, minus three radians per second, divided by six seconds. This whole thing then turns out to be 0 0.88833, sorry, 0 0.833 radians per second squared. There's our alpha, good. B part. See, just when you think it's safe, there's always a B part to something, isn't it? Okay, B part wants to know the angle through which the wheel turned in units of revolution. Angle. Ah. So now we're going to have to use one or the other of these equations because they have theta in it. That's what we want. Which one can we use? Doesn't really matter very much, does it? Because they both have the theta, which we want to know, the omegas, which we do know, and the alpha. So let's use the first one that's handy. So then theta equals omega zero t plus one half alpha t squared. So okay, we know omega zero, we know t, we know alpha, we just found it, and we know t squared. So then this is purely a case of putting in these numbers, and it turns out that when you put in the radians and so forth, you wind up with 33 radians. So is that good? Is that the answer? No. The answer says, or the problem says, 
angles through which the wheel turn, the units are revolutions. We can have revolutions. So how do we convert from radians to revolutions again? There are two pi radians in a revolution. So then we can say two pi radians are the same thing as one revolution. So if we make a fraction out of that, it's a one, isn't it? Two pi radians and one revolution, same thing. So then the radians will cancel and we'll wind up with revolutions. And this turns out to be 5.25 revolutions. 5.25 revolutions. Is that good? Is that reasonable? Mm, I don't know if you've ever done any hiding or not, but it seems like maybe five revolutions is about enough time for it to get up to speed. So maybe not too bad. Let's accept it and be happy.